Welcome to Compri. Situated on the outskirts of the bustling capital city of Porto, Spain, we find a gem hidden in plain sight. Compri, as the school is fondly called, was first established in 1976 on November 26th, to be precise. Mokurapo Senior Comprehensive was one of the five initial senior comprehensive schools at the time, established during the post-independence period to assist in filling the gap in the education system. Mokurapo Senior Comprehensive started blazing the trail in technical vocational subjects, offering tuition to students for two years after completing their junior secondary school education. The 1970s saw the moving away of the elitist system of education, where only the privileged few were afforded the education necessary to adequately equip the citizens to be positive contributors to the economic development of the country. Though not quite ready for the scholastic business it was established, Mokorapo Senior Comprehensive welcomed students in January 1977. I am Alan Anderson. I was a student for the period January 1977 to July 1977. Then I left and I went to John Donaldson Technical Institute where I spent four years there pursuing two craft courses at the end of which I then went on to Wheeling Jesuit College, pursue a Bachelor of Science in Accountancy and then um, later an MBA. But I must recall my fun days at Mokorapo. Was it Mokorapo? Though short, it was quite intense. It was a lot about football, a lot about old friends and so on. But I really wanted to express my deep, deep appreciation and, and respect for the, the community at Mokorapo. I want to wish them all the best at, for the 45th anniversary because it has been a long journey. We have a lot to be proud of. We have come a long way and against tremendous odds, tremendous, tremendous odds. And I must say that I have no problem identifying with Mokorapo as my school, the school of my choice. Mr. Bernard Gibbs took the reins after the retirement of Mrs. Wilshire. Recalling his words from the 10th anniversary edition of the school's publication, Vibrations, he said, I dream of a Mokorapo Senior Comprehensive that is held in respect and admiration for its achievements by society. A Mokorapo that will have built up over the years a fine tradition as an educational institution. Now, retired and having served as school supervisor, Mr. Gibbs is now poised to look back on the Mokorapo he molded. One of the past principals, very proud of being so. In 1976 was a watershed year for education in Trinidad and Tobago. There was the establishment of senior comprehensive schools throughout the nation in late 1976. This was to cater for the graduates of the junior secondary schools, and these schools were established in 1973. Schools. Mukrapa Senior Comprehensive is one of those new ones. So the first principal, Mrs. Annette Wiltshire, the first vice principal, Mr. Augusta Schramm-Mercosy, started the school in, on November 26, 1976. Mrs. Wiltshire, a teacher at St. Joseph's Convent, and Mr. Rekosy, a teacher at Queen's Royal College, were posted, or posted, I should say, at Mukurapo Senior Conference. Neither of the two had any experience of administration. It came from teaching classrooms into administration. That was a great challenge for them. The still developing infrastructure, physical infrastructure. I think what happened in, on November 26 onwards towards the end of that term was the registration of students. So you had the teachers facing a challenge of infrastructural um, development going on. All they had was the staff room, the, the administrative block, the main classroom block, the toilet area, the hall, and the block with the library. Okay. Now, when you register these students, now you have to think about these students who just, well, 
they left the, 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 the junior secondary school in July of that year, July 1976. So for three months, they had no school. It's not now where you had online classes. There were no online classes. Yet. They were at home awaiting their school to be built. Okay? Um, in addition to that, all of these students were for three years accustomed to a shift system. They either went to school in the morning from half past seven to 12.15 or from 12.15 to 5.15 in the afternoon. So you had a bunch of students who became, for want of a better word, just accustomed to full day school and also they were out of school for almost three months. But the challenge that the teachers had was to get these students back into the, the, the mode of education. One of the challenges that they faced was students who were accustomed to coming to school in the morning lost their concentration plan for whole day school. So when the school broke for lunch, broke for lunch, as you say, they disappeared. And then secondly, the students who were accustomed to the afternoon shift coming to school for 12.15, they normally woke up late. So you'll find these students coming to school 10, half past 10 in the morning. How do they look at it? How do they cope with it? The teachers, the administration, the teachers had a, pi a pioneer instinct. They were establishing ground, new ground in the education system of, of our nation. So what they did, they wanted to be close to the students, physically, emotionally, mentally. So you all know the, the, the library block. They converted the library block which is close to block E, into the staff room. And the existing staff room became the library. And that happened for two to three years with Mrs. Mrs. Wiltshire and Dr. Van Gossel from America saying at the helm. The students, the teachers were close to the students. They didn't have far to go from the then staff room, the now library, to block E. Okay. There was a great synergy between the administration and the teachers. They worked together. They worked hard together to establish a good foundation at Nukuraku Senior Conference. After a couple of years, Mrs. Wilshire left. Mr. Ramagasen became the second principal, but he himself did not last long. He left teaching altogether. And some of you all may remember that um, he eventually became the Minister of Education in the mid 1990s. As a matter of fact, I was then principal of Mukwapo Senior Conference when he was one of the ministers of education that we interfaced with. I was asked to become principal between 1976 to January 1986. Mukwapo Senior Conference had five principals, including myself. Now, how can that, how can that administration be stable? when you're changing principles so often. So I accepted a job. I accepted a job. Knowing full well that my main challenge was to get, uh, how should I put it? Respect returned to the office of the principal. Here was I in January, 1986, taking up the man. But in the absence of a vision, there was an underlying desire among the teachers to get the school working. They came every day to a school with a poisoned atmosphere. And it was not a happy thing. It was not happy. So, you know, basically, deep down inside, they wanted the school to work. So I had to tap on that desire. Okay. So that became my vision or the vision for the school. Let us get the school working. I discuss ideas, and sometimes I would lead to the, in the front. When I first came at Mukwapu, at that point in time, you had approximately 16 to 1700 students on the compound because you had Form 4 and Form 5. And at that point in time, Mukwapu had three feeder schools, Belmont Junior Secondary, Diego Martin Junior Secondary, and Mukwapu Junior Secondary. So at every, any given point in time, during a school day at Mukuraku Senior Conference, we had about 1,700 students moving back and forth. 
to help me in the administration, I had one vice principal. My teaching staff was 96 teachers. My civil staff, including the office staff, the lab technician and so on, was 35. So in addition to being, quote unquote, the boss of 96 teachers, 35 civil staff, I was the principal for almost 1,800 students. I was also a plant manager for 13 buildings over eight acres of land. In other words, I was the chief executive officer of a large plant. I also had the challenge of getting the children settled. One of the first things I noticed when I came there, when the term began, was you had more students lining on the corridors than you had students in the classroom. My first strategy in trying to get the school a little more settled was what I call eventually MBWA, management by walking about. I was always, or I would say 80% of the day I was on the corridor. Keep moving, go to the class, go to the class. As they walk around the block, I will walk behind them. Keep moving, keep moving, go to the class, go to the class, go to the class. The teachers appreciated the effort I was making. As a matter of fact, Dr. Hollins Liverpool told me, Mr. Gibbs, I like how you were trying to clear the corridors. Eventually, there were some teachers following my example and started to help me to keep the students moving. In the early days of my administration, as a matter of fact, even before I became principal, as I, no, uh, um, I did it in, when I, was, I became a principal. Because I, I, could, I didn't dare do that when Mr. Stewart or Reverend Samuel did it. Um, Andrews may remember that. That long corridor from the administrative block to block E, you had about, I would say, seven to eight huge concrete benches. Those benches were the lining spots. Students would congregate around those benches instead of going to classes. So my first effort was to move all those benches to the basketball court. I don't know if they're still there. And it was empty that corridor of all those benches. Okay. So that was an effort to get students off the corridors into the classroom. The other main idea came about two or three years into my stewardship as principal. And this idea came from the teachers. Okay. Prior to that idea, and one of the reasons why we had so much movement, teachers had classrooms. They were teachers' rooms. Blocky, each classroom on Blocky was a teacher's room. And the students used to go to teachers' rooms for their classes or to the, to the laboratory. Each school day had seven periods. Now you could imagine six to seven times a day, hundreds of students moving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. All right. Each class period was 45 minutes. By the time you get the students settled in the classroom, 20 to 30 minutes of that period gone. So you had contact time, 15 to 20 minutes. Bring the bell ring, movement started again. So we came up with the idea, one, form rooms. Teachers will no longer have rooms. All those classrooms in Blocky and where there were classrooms in other buildings became form rooms. Students were identified with a form room. And we reduced the number of periods to five periods a day. Each period, one hour. So even though students moved about very slowly to class, by the time they settled, you still had about 40 to 45 minutes contact time. You still lost time, but at least you increased the contact time. Okay? That was how we managed to try to settle the school at that point. I, I'm not too sure whether that five period day is still existing. I don't know. Okay. So when you have when the bell rang to end a period, most of the, most of the time, the vast majority of students stayed in their form room. Teachers moved from the classroom, from the staff room to a classroom, or from a classroom to another classroom. Okay. For example, they had an English class on the top floor of Blocky and another English class on the ground floor, they move from the top floor to the ground floor. 
Okay? Teachers moved. The vast majority of the students remained in the classroom. Okay? The movement centered around those students who had to go to, lab, to the labs or technical vocational aid. <clears throat> only those students removed. Remove. So the only time you had a mass exodus from the classrooms was at break time or at lunch time. Okay? And that helped to settle the school to a great extent. Okay? I have to say, there were some teachers who did not like the idea of having to move. Right? They were happy to stay in their, in, their, in their teacher's room for the entire day. Right? Never venture into the staff room. And that I did, that couldn't build staff unity. Stay in the staff room, okay? So those basic ideas were how I, my intention of getting the staff to work with me and the students a little more settled, okay? Um, one of the main drawbacks with the staff though, because of the toxic nature and the fact that the ideas were not entertained by Mr. Stewart and Mr. And Mr. Samaru, the teachers lost confidence in their ability to make a difference. So that anytime there was a heavy movement or heavy interruption, heavy, heavy disturbance in the, in the school, the teachers were eager to get the school supervisors down to the school. Let the school supervisors handle the problem. They couldn't do it. So there was that lack of confidence in the ability to handle the stories of the school, to manage the, the challenges of the school among the staff. That is something I had to fight. When I say fight, I don't mean physically. But I had to, I had to um, try to get the staff to convince themselves, we can handle this. We don't have to have supervisors coming in. But it was frustrating. It, it reached a stage where the supervisors realized that I was on one page trying to get things working and the teachers were on the other page. Let the supervisors help. So they used to say, Mr. Gibbs, we, we have confidence you handle it. Come back to us. And they left. They left. Never helped me. Supervisor, supervisor never helped me as a, as a principal. Okay? So that it became frustrating. So frustrating that I wrote a general letter to the staff, telling them how I felt about this, telling them that we need to get our act together as a unit. We need to have confidence in ourselves to deal with our situation and so on. So I published this letter in the, in the tennis registers on the news board. It was a very terse letter. To some extent, it was harsh. It, it, it um, portrayed or exhibited the frustration that I experienced as a principal. So, the immediate reaction of the teachers was not to talk to me, not to talk to me at all, because this was a different Mr. Gibbs, right? different Mr. Gibbs. He passed me in the corridor. It was a song of silence, but I waited it out. Why? Because every once in a while, a teacher would come to my office, Mr. Gibbs, I know what you're trying to do. I know what you're trying to do. But unfortunately, no teacher wanted to identify themselves as a supporter of Mr. Gibbs. At that time, there was a system in Trinidad where you had um, exchange of teachers. So there was a gentleman from Scotland, I think, yeah was on the staff at that time. He came to me, he said, Mr. Gibbs, I know what you're trying to do. You know, but you have to withdraw that letter. Apologize to the staff and withdraw that letter. Because at least a stage where I couldn't get anything done. Okay? The staff wasn't talking to me. Okay. But I knew deep down inside that they knew where I was coming from. They sensed the frustration. So I called the staff, staff meeting and I apologized to the letter. That was the watershed. That was the watershed. From then on, I got the staff to back me, to work with me. 
I exchange ideas with them. I recognize their, 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 their professionalism, the highly skilled, the highly skilled teachers and the professionals that they were. I also recognize that they had more talents than being a teacher of a subject. Many of them have talents, have talents that the school could have used. I made sure I tapped on those talents. Like every other human, all of them have faults. I recognize their faults, but I never dwelt on their faults. I knew their strengths. I dwelt on their strengths. I recognize their strengths. Slowly but surely, they regain that respect for the office of the principal. Okay? And I, I, I cherish that respect very, very closely. Anytime a teacher or to yourself, threaten that respect. I came down heavily on them, very heavily on them. Okay. Because a school could not function if the head is rotten. Any organization cannot function if the head is rotten. Okay. Slowly but surely, we try to get things working in a stabilized fashion at the one of the things that helped was the fact that um, well into my career, I would say five, six years into my career as a principal, people realized that the administration was not stable. It was no longer changing principles as though it was changing clothes. I was principal for five, six years. People got accustomed to me. I got accustomed to them. Okay? There was that, this, that stability in administration. And my vice principal, Mr. Walker, was a very, very supporting member of staff, a very, very supporting vice principal. So here we were, the early 90s, struggling still. It was in those days, maybe Andrews can remember, I don't know, maybe in those days, maybe you remember. Mokrapo made the headlines in news for all the wrong reasons, all the wrong reasons. And that this was a great disappointment for the teachers, not only the teachers, but for, head, for the head office. Mukrapo Senior Conference was in the heart of the capital of the city. It was very close to the Ministry of Education. And it was a great, it was, it was supposed to be the model senior comprehensive school. It was not. It was an embarrassment, quote unquote, an embarrassment to the head office because it made it the headlines for, for all the wrong reasons. So you had to get to, the, 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 the school's image changed. And that was a task. It was not easy. It was not easy. When our students left the school in the afternoon, or even lunchtime when they left the school, the streets of St. James was swamped by the students of Mukwabo Senior Company. Our, our uniform was very distinctive yellow shirt and maroon pants, okay? Um, one of the things I did, I wrote a letter to the men of the business spaces in St. James, don't allow my students in uniform into your business space. Okay. It was not easy. Okay. Um, so that, how should I put it? To get the students focused on education is a great task. One of the things I had to do was to make sure I developed the, the, the professional skills of the teachers. So I had workshops for teachers, I had workshops for my head of departments, I had workshops for my deans, okay. improve their skills in handling children. Okay. Even when I went to workshops for principal administration, anything that would was necessary, I would share with my teachers. So there would be follow-up workshops from my workshop with my teachers. When they were training, when they were training um, at workshops for my heads of departments or deans, I send them, okay? And some men they would come back and say, well, Mr. Gibbs, some of the things they told us, you told us, um, they told us, we, you already told us, okay? And I felt good, I was making a difference, okay? One of the things that we, I did also, the school, the students had not much respect for the uniform. We tried to get, make sure the uniform was properly attired and so on. 
but it was a hard task. Punctuality, regularity was a, was a task was a task among the students. One of my strategies to deal with that, and then I, here again I, I, I um, led by example. And again, Andrews might remember that. Every morning from half past seven till about half past eight, Mr. Gibbs will be at the main gate inspecting uniform. Right? Inspecting uniform. Why you not have a uniform? Encourages them before they go. Not debining them from coming to school, but getting the message across. You must wear a uniform properly. One of the greatest problems was the plethora of shoes, all different colors of shoes. You wanted black shoes or white shoes, black socks or white socks. But it came in all different colors of shoes. Okay. We even tried at some point in time, and they may not have been feared to have black polish, brown polish, waiting for them to polish their red shoes or green shoes and so on. Just so they get across the message. Just to come back, come to the, the, the present time, I watch with pride now when I see the students of Eastern Crawford Senior County walking through St. John's anyway. Well dressed, beautifully dressed, black shoes, white socks, right? pants neat, skirts neat. And I feel a sense of pride because I knew the hard work that we had to do to get the students to respect the uniform. Okay. In addition to examining uniforms, I also examined your book bag at school. Some of the students, especially the boys, came walking to school as though they were boxers getting into a, a ring ready to fight. Hands are swinging, not a single book. But they came to, to so we had to get them to get their books in school. No sense leaving the books at home. So we dealt with uniform, we dealt with books bags and so on. And you examine the bag because sometimes they have things in the bag that not, would not be accepted in the school. Okay. Eventually, time passed, the students get to realize that uh, Mr. Gibbs and the teachers are serious about how we report our experience. Okay. In the meantime, we continue our efforts, clear the corridors, no, no loitering in the corridors, clear the corridors, bell rang, back to the classroom, back to the classroom, clear the corridors, clear the corridors, in your classroom. That, that was a, a considered effort. And because I led the way in the early years, the deans and sometimes the health departments took up the, the, the mantle also, clearing the corridors, clearing the corridors. Okay? So that when I, after some years of leaving Mokroba, like coming to the school, Mr. Philip was principal and so on, the school was like a churchyard, quiet, empty. When I say empty, I mean the corridors were empty and so on. Students in the classroom. There were single student loitering. And I felt proud because I know the hard job that we did in getting that done. Okay? Um, to get the students focused on learning, right? We had workshops, teachers to develop their teaching styles and so on. We had the heads of departments workshop with the teachers, teaching methods and so on. But also, we have to realize that these students are living in an era, um, how should I put it? Instant gratification was important. You can't wait long term to be uh, rewarded for effort. Yeah. We develop a school motto. I think it's still there. Success is achieved only through hard work. In addition to that, to, to get them to understand that they have to love their school and respect the school, they have to make Mukwapa first. So I developed 10 ways, 10 ways to make Mukwapa first. You have to pardon my, my aging memory. I almost forgot that we had it um, on the science block wall. So they walk on, on the get top. 10 ways to make proper foods. 10 ways to make no proper foods. Right? So we have the school motto. Success is achieved only through hard work. 10 ways to make no proper foods. And also, 
Thirdly, in that effort to get them to focus on themselves as human beings and themselves as students, I developed a pledge. I think I remembered. As I leave the school compound, I must remember that the eyes of the, of the public are on me. I represent my school wherever I go. Good be bad behavior, sorry, good behavior enhances the, images, the image of my school. Bad behavior destroys it. So what we had just a few minutes prior to the beginning of the school bell, the end of the day, every student would recite that pledge. It worked. It worked. Um, so those are the things that we did. But getting back to the um, instant gratification issue. We had to reward the students for the effort in the classroom. You couldn't wait until the end of the term for a term exam. Okay. The first term was the, the longest term in the school, 15, 15 weeks. The second term was also the longest term. So we took September month for things to settle down. In October, we had what we call an assessment period. An assessment period. Again, and Jews may remember that, uh, others <clears throat> remember that. Other schools had midterm exams. I didn't want an exam. I didn't want to press the teachers having an exam to correct papers and so on and put in marks. So what I did, I developed a system where during the month of October in the first term and during the month of February in the second term, all the classroom work, all the homework, you have you formalize the grading in your subject. So you assess the students from the classroom work, you assess them from their homework. At the end of the month, you, you find an average of their mark. And that mark will be your testimonial mark for the month of October. For you to get a testimonial, first class, I divided the first class testimonial, second class testimonial, third class testimonial. For you to get a first class testimonial, you have to have a mark of eight and above in all your subjects to get a first class. Oh, no, sorry, nine, nine and above, nine or ten. Okay. To get a second class, seven to eight. Third class, six to seven. If you did poorly and got a five in a subject, no testimonial. Apart from that, you also had a conduct mark. If your behavior in classroom was not good for that subject, you got a C next to your mark. For example, you may, got a, may have gotten a seven, but if your conduct wasn't mark, your teacher will mark a C. Therefore, you got seven C. So even though your marks, um, you may have been deserving of a testimonial because of the marks. That C deprived you of a testimonial. So we monitored not only their work, their behavior in the classroom. So the early in November, we had testimonial day where the students got their testimonials. We came over on the stage, received a testimonial, wrong the board and get back. And they came to look forward to it. Okay. It improved the standard of work. It improved the results, not only at the end of the term, but for CXC and NEC and so on. So by analogy to the things that I did, okay. What also, um, how should I put it? Well, it got, got me in the good box of this people to start. I was what, what, what we call primus inter pares, first among equals. Although as principal, I identified on the ground with the teachers, okay? Cultural aspects, sport sporting aspects and so on, I was there in the trenches with them, okay? Football, I was on the sidelines, right? Basketball on the court, okay? 
So I was there with them. So it's not only in the classroom that we saw Mr. Gibbs, we saw Mr. Clark, we saw Mr. Gibbs on the field reporting and so on. Okay. Um, in addition to that, I had devised ways of rewarding teachers for their effort. One of the things I did each Christmas using school funds raised by various activities and fundraising efforts, I told the teachers on the last day of the term, every Christmas, just bring your appetite and come. The school will afford you a huge Christmas luncheon. Okay. That was my way of telling the students, the teachers, thank you for your effort. Thank you for supporting me. Okay. Um, so things went on very well. Eventually, another thing that we had, I established was a, a past students union. We call it the graduates. Okay. In order to enhance the image of the school, we invited media, the newspaper, the print, to come and look at the school and to say something nice in the school football about the school in the press. Well, our image was still down in the dumps in the early 90s and so on. One media house came, the bomb. They came, they took pictures, they walked around, they interviewed and so on. When they eventually published <clears throat> their report in the papers, big spread, the only picture they thought fitting for Mukra Senior Crumble was the picture of a broken toilet. Could you imagine how we felt? We were hurt, but we picked ourselves up, dusted ourselves off, and continued our efforts. Continued our efforts. Because we know we were slowly but surely making a difference in Mukra Senior Crumble. It may not have been reflected on the outside as yet. But you know, the school was becoming very stable. Very, very stable. Teachers knew their role. Obviously, there were teachers who were still not 100% with us. Some as low as 50%. But I had to know which battles to fight. I wasn't going to fight any teacher to get them to work 100%. A shift in the education system saw the de-shifting of the junior secondary schools. This meant that thousands of students who were previously assigned to junior secondary schools needed to be placed given that education for all was the mandate. Hey, my name is Marlene Smart, Marlene Patricia Smart, and I was the principal from 2001 to 2010. Now, I came to Mukarapo in 1980 from Mukarapo Junior Sec. So I've been there for a very long time. I was a teacher in the English department and then I became a dean, then a vice principal, and then the principal. So that I've been there for a very long time, part of the history of Mukarapo Senior Comprehensive, now called East Mukarapo Secondary. So, so very early, as a vice, as a principal, very early, we revisited our vision, our mission, our core values. And so we had a map in front of us. We had goals. And everything we did at Mukarapu, we in, was a step towards our goal. And in a nutshell, what, what was the goal? The goal was the holistic development of our clients within an open, comfortable, caring, and a democratic environment. Mistakes were made, many mistakes were made along the way, but that is how we grew. We grew into what is now a vibrant institution, East Mugrapo Secondary. Our sixth form. First, we had a repeater's class very early 
from the past principal, Mr. Bernard Gibbs. He instituted a fifth form repeaters class. And our tone, the tone of the school started to change then. We could not fill all, all the class, the entire class from our students. So we took students from other schools, Bishop, Southeast Port of Spain, Providence, lots of other schools. But we were ready for our own sixth form school. We knew we were ready. And when I became the principal, I started the process for the sixth form school. Let me tell you, a most challenging and grilling experience because we had to prove to the Ministry of Education that we, Mukarapo Senior Comprehensive School at the time, could benefit from a sixth form, that we could handle a sixth form. Now remember, not far from us, we have the sixth form government school. So they asked us, why would you want your own? Because we said our students, our Mukarapo students, when they were finished fifth form, they had nowhere to go. We wanted to keep them. Remember our vision, our mission, a holistic client. So the process began. It began with one supervisor, Mrs. Yvonne Ramsey, and then she died suddenly, just when we thought that we were going to, on the breakthrough into the sixth form, we got another supervisor, Mrs. Wilkinson, Cheryl Ann Wilkinson. But I must say, they were both very supportive because they loved us, because they knew that we loved our clientele. We had a lot of support, but they didn't let us off the hook. We had a lot of paperwork to do, data to present, statistics, showing proof that Mukarapo Senior Comprehensive School could sustain and that we could benefit from a sixth form. Let me tell you, it took about three years. But one thing for Mukarapo, and it started years ago, we had always had a vibrant network. We had a vibrant heads of department. We had vibrant deans, okay? And we worked together. No matter what, we would quarrel, we would argue, we'd have disagreements, but we had a vision, a mission, and a goal, which most of us, most of us, nearly all of us believed in it because I was a dean at the time. And finally, after getting together, because the heads of departments had to do a lot of collating, the deans, the vice principal, the principal, the office staff, we all banded together and we produced whatever documents they asked. And so in 2004, the sixth form was born. I must say, it was a wonderful time for all of us. We struggled at first, but we persevered together. We never looked back and the tone of the school continued to improve. And then what did we get? A Form 1 class. That was another very challenging period for us because we were nervous. You remember it was something new and we were hearing all kinds of stories. And we were hearing that we would only get for one students who didn't perform well at the, at the SE. And they were coming in with from zero to 30%. All of us were scared. But again, we worked as a team. The heads of departments met with their teachers. The deans met with their teachers. The principal and vice principal, we had staff meetings. We brought in people to talk to us, to tell us about their experience, to give us advice. We couldn't do it on our own, so we sought advice. I remember one very, very interesting session was with, was with, with, with Mrs. Crouch. She was the principal of St. Joseph's Convent and she came. And the thing that settled us a lot. And so we planned. The heads of departments met with their teachers and they got their ideas and they planned. The deans met with the teachers, they got their ideas and they planned. And then the vice principal and principal met with the staff and we planned. We planned because we had heard of stories, stories of the bigger students bullying the little ones, taking advantage of them, 
fights starting, you know, we encouraging them, they for once indulge in acts of discipline, you know. We heard about the low academic performance of so many of them. And, uh, you know, we were concerned. And then we were concerned that the parents of the better students, if we were getting any at all, would want to remove them from the school. And so we planned. I remember vividly that first session we had with our home and students. We pulled out, we stopped nothing. We pulled out all the strings. We had the video showing the achievements of Mukarapu. We introduced the staff. We introduced everybody. We had past students coming and talking to them because we also had a vibrant past students association. I remember that day, one of the teachers said, Mrs. Smart, oh God, why you had to talk to those parents so long. I know I like to talk and you know I, I would talk but I had explained I said you will see the benefits of it just now and we saw the benefits of it because we kept them long because our great fear was that our parents would apply for transfers. We didn't have a lot of parents after that first meeting we did not have a lot of parents applying for transfers and guess what the ministry supported us they didn't entertain transfers and so we had our first batch of form one students we didn't stream but we grouped them so we had i think two boys classes two only girls classes we had mixed you know of children who did a you know a little better to push them and we chose the teachers heads of departments again notice i'm talking about all of this because it was not the effort only of the principal it was a team effort that was my mantra a teamwork i believe in it totally so the heads of departments the deans the vice principal and the principal and the office staff we all worked together and we, we walked with them, we disciplined them. I remember one example, a good example, and this came from the teachers, is that we would not let the form ones purchase things at the cafeteria, the same place that the other, the rest of the school, that's the form fours, fives, not our form sixes, the form fours and fives. They were there because we were afraid they would push them, they would steal their money. So the deans, the safety officers, and some of the teachers would organize them in, turn in another section, make them form lines, and they purchase their goods. And again, from the Form 1 students, our tone continued to rise. Success. We saw success glaring at us. A vibrant Mukarapu, where everyone is operating in a comfortable, vibrant environment. And we did well. I had retired by then, by the time they were in Form 2 or 3, I think they had retired. But I got news that the results of the Form 1s were very, very good. And I want to stress again, it was a team effort. And that is how you improve with teamwork. And I would like to stress this so that the teachers who are there now, you know, if they didn't know, they would be inspired that you have to join the team. If you want anything to succeed, even in your families, it is a team group. And again, the tone of the school changed. And there are so, so many, many, innumerable amount of past students who have done well and who are, are doing well. And I want to boast, first of all, of our Minister of Public Utilities, Marvin Gonzalez. Not many people know that he's a Mukarapo student, huh? went through right through a Mukarapo student. And every time he talks, I feel so proud. Then we have Bernard Shepherd, a lawyer, doing great work, very vibrant young man. We have Irene Hines. She has been a PNM counselor for years and she's still active. She lives, lives in Taranage, also a very bright, vibrant person. And we have people like Alan Anderson. He was a teacher, then he became a lecturer. He's now a lawyer. You know, Cecil Roberts, he's the vice principal of St. Anthony's College. We have Brinsley, the late Brinsley Hudson, a wonderful young man, you know, 
to the restaurant to him, oh Lord. And he's, he's a, he was a businessman. He became the manager of Mukarapo. And, you know, people laughed and heckled him and said, he's a teacher as well. He taught football. And we have Ian Clausel. I can go on and on. Clint Marcel, Angus Eve, who is now the um, coach of the team. We have Randy Glasgow, a noted entertainer. And the whole football team, our national team, made up of a lot of Mukarapo students. Kareem Highland, our captain, Kevin Molino, Kerwin Jack, Cornell Glenn, well, they have gone, Kirk, Kenwin Jones, they're away. Jovan and Alvin Jones, Atola Guerra, a vibrant, vibrant Mukarapo. And out there, we have a lot of people, a lot of Mukarapo students doing well. And it's like a mini society out there of Mukarapo students. I meet them all the time and I'm so proud of them. And you're asking why? Why they are like that? Because they found love. Love. And that's the keynote here. I'm going to end on this note that East Mukarapo Secondary, formerly Mukarapo Senior Comprehensive, easily called Mukarapo, is a school of love. Sometimes very tough love, eh? Tough, tough love. But in your own family, there is tough love. But they are moving, the school is moving from strength to strength. And I end with a line from a poem written by one past, past teacher, excuse me, he's retired, Mr. Eugene Berkeley. A long poem, but I just used the last line. The mission, the mission at the school is to save the family called Mukarapo. I'm very, very proud of the Mukarapo family. And I'm very proud that I was given the chance to be part of it. God bless all of you. Continue to rise, to shine. The legacy of Mukarapo remains the same regardless of incarnation. Moving from the senior comprehensive era into the secondary school phase was not the last change to occur. Oh no. Mr. Philip recounts being summoned to a meeting while in the middle of a sport meet, where he and other principals were told they were to receive single-sex students in the next intake, essentially turning East Mokorapo Secondary School into an all-boys school. Yeah, good evening to everyone. My name is Derek Phillip. Um, okay, so I'm the present principal of East Mokorapo Secondary School. I became principal in 2010 um, as a fledgling principal at a newly Okay, a newly converted secondary school, like East Mokarapo Secondary School. There were quite a number of challenges. Challenges ranging from one, rebranding the school and convincing, convincing people that, A, this is not a bad place to be. Um, as a senior comprehensive school, the school had, had a monocle and people believed that there was only bad things coming out of East Mokarapo. Okay, bad things come out of Mukarapo Senior Comprehensive School. Our conversion to, to East Mukarapo in meant that we were now on a different level. Okay, the level being that we were getting churned from primary school. No longer were the junior sex flourishing. Before, we would have gotten students from the junior secondary school at Form 3 level, and they would finish off their actual five-year career at the senior comprehensive school. But since the school has changed from a senior comprehensive to a semi-secondary school, it meant that we were getting turned straight from the primary school. And that made a big difference to what we saw as school. Um, I remember the, the first kids coming in and how nervous those parents were. Um, we had a lot of requests for transfers out. A lot of people wanted to leave because they saw the school as being a very dangerous place. But it didn't turn out to be that way. And a lot of students who spent their time here felt great that they stayed. In fact, what people believed on the outside was totally different to what actually took place on the school's compound. We have a very caring school and 
we have a caring staff and those are two important assets that would take any institution in the right direction so that that was one of our major challenges in terms of rebranding ourselves the next challenge is that we will send boys we will send an all boys cast in 2010 meaning that they were saying that all the, the girls were doing better than the boys and they decided to have the senior comprehensive accept only boys at SE level. And um, we had boys for about three years, from 2010 to 2013. This didn't augur well because at the end of the day, we had a real, we had the lowest of the low coming. And it caused another upheaval, fights, disagreements all in the road. We had other issues going on. So again, we are fighting to rebrand ourselves, but luckily the government changed that and we came back to um, co-ed in 2013. And we have never looked back since. We are looking forward to, to continuing where we left off when we transformed from, from the senior comprehensive to a semi-year secondary school. Yes, we have had some challenges, but we continue Onward. My vision for the school is that we have a school, a caring school, a caring school where everyone is a part and belongs and feels that they are part of, of something great and something building. I am looking at sports, I'm looking at academics, I'm, I'm looking at the technical aspect because we're also a technical school, all working together to ensure that we have an all wrong student. And that's what we are doing right now. We are building all wrong character, we are building all wrong people. We are building caring people because we have a caring staff and we have caring people working with us. Some of the students that I'm really, when I look at them and I look back at my time at the school, because I'm, I have encountered a lot of lovely people. Our catchment area includes all the depressed areas in Port of Spain and, and its environment. And these people that you would think coming from these areas would be of no good but we have some wonderful people coming from these areas in fact we are proud to say that we have kids coming from Silas, Beatum, um, East Port of Spain, Big Yard and Carnage and so on and there are some students that really stand out in my books people like Kaleem Highland he's the national captain I remember I was the manager of the school football team and taking him home to get his gears his football gears and we had to go up Big Yard and then we have to he sent somebody up the steps to get his gears in the house that was never locked. Those kind of things. People like Elijah Young, we used to call him Blackie Chan. He was a pest, but now he has a, he has a degree in a university in Texas. All right. He was always a sportsman. He came from Harding Place in Cookery. I mean, oh, Cookery is a very rough place, but he came from there and he, he never gave up. He wanted to succeed. He was never into badness. We have people like Kareem Spencer. He was our first batch of Form 1 students. From day one, Kareem stood out. He stood, really stood out. He did well. He spent his entire seven years, in fact, eight years, he repeated. And he spent his entire eight years at East Macraco Secondary School. I believe that he's doing law now. All right? We have a, a little girl by the name of Tenille Constantine. Very quiet, very petite. But at the end of the day, she got several level passes, including things like admats and so on. And coming from Marval, very quiet community, very unassuming individual. But at the end of the day, she did well. And there's a guy by now, his name is, is Jabari Francis. He would have done admats, physics and so on. And right now he's doing his nautical, um, I, I think it's actually navigational studies, okay, at UTT. All right, and he's on a boat outside there doing his stuff. And you know, these people stand out to me because these are very simple people from very tough neighborhoods. And that is the kind of student we have at East Mukarapo Secondary School. That's the kind of children that we want to encourage and want to push forward. Our school is making a name for itself. Right now, we have students who are choosing East Mukarapo as our first choice. That was a, that was something that you would never think of in years gone by. Imagine students choosing East Mukarapo. East Mokrapu was not a choice in a lot of schools. They were just placed because they didn't do well. We are now getting students who are average. We are getting students who would have gone to St. James' Sec. 
So we are getting material, we're getting students who would come and make our school proud. We have lots of material to work with. I know the monocle of the senior come, people want to hold on to that. So to say that, hey, this is a this is a horrible place to be. But when they come, they feel a sense of family, they feel a sense of warmth, and they are also experiencing success. That is the most, that is one of the most important things. We are basically re a rebranded school. We continue to build our brand. And we expect that the student that would leave East Mukraco Secondary School would be caring, would be all round, would be experienced. Imagine you having an educated youngster coming from a tough neighborhood, going on to do great things. They would go into any environment and do extremely well because of where they came from. They're intelligent young people and they are able to, to actually maneuver across the border do well and i am hoping that when they do well they go back to their communities and help those in need Mukarapo is a flag bearer we have been dubbed one of the more caring schools in port of spain at the uh, okay, at the outset of this COVID, lots of schools faltered a lot of schools could not manage a school is only great when they have really wonderful people in it our staff I can say nothing bad about In fact, they are top of the line. They took the challenge and they moved. And they have been kind of school. I am proud to say that I'm the principal of staff of East Mokarapu Secondary School. I am proud to say that I'm the principal of the students. They may come from all those depressed areas, but I am proud to be their principal because I know they have character. We will help to build their character and we will take them to the next level. And we have been doing that for the past number of years and will continue to do so. So at this juncture, I want to say that East Mokrapo is a wonderful place. We are a proud institution. We continue to be a proud institution. And I am seeing greatness actually going forward. We have a mixture of sports. We have academics. We can boast of technical faculties. Many schools can't boast of this. And we are continuing to plot a course for education in Trinidad and Tobago. Some people may look at us as nothing, but we see ourselves as great and we continue to be great. Yes, 45 years is very young as a school. Some schools may be 150 odd years, but at the end of the day, we are taking our time to grow. In fact, I just realized that some of our students just turned 60 and we have been moving on. So. We are proud to be East Mukarapu Secondary School. We are proud to, to bring out wonderful students from sportsmen to academics to lawyers. And we will continue to do so. We have that, we have that for we have that for success. The mechanisms are in there, are all in place, and it is working for us. But the one of the most important things is that we have caring people, we have systems in place, and we have students who are able to take on that challenge and with that said 45 years i want to congratulate the school i'm happy to be the principal of the school i was here for 40 years i'm here for the 45th and i won't be here for 50 all right but at the end of the day we are celebrating how great a school we are and how great we will be and how great we will be for the future thank you very much and all the best season Mukarapo Secondary School. Over the years, Mukarapo has been synonymous with sport as the school has been a champion in almost all disciplines it has ventured into at one time or another. The vision of the school sees a student who is engaged in wholesome holistic activity that will essentially benefit the national community. So, over the years, many students who have traversed the halls of this fine institution have done well, not only for themselves and their families, but for Trinidad and Tobago. In sport, yes, but in an array of other disciplines. Good day, my name is Marvin Gonzalez. I am a past student of the East Mucarapo Secondary School formerly the Mucarapo Senior Comprehensive School. I graduated in 1993 with five or six O-level certificates or subjects. 
Having graduated at the school, I went on to pursue my course of studies in law, and in 2003, I was admitted to practice at the local bar as an attorney at law. Having graduated as an attorney at law and practicing law in the public service in Trinidad and Tobago, I entered national politics and became the member of parliament for Lupino Borneo West in the 2020 general elections and entered the government of Trinidad and Tobago as the Minister of Public Utilities. I want to thank all the teachers, all the parents, and my schoolmates who have made my learning and experience at East Mokarapu Secondary School an enriching one. I studied business, and what I found about the curriculum at East Mokarapu is that it was well balanced and it provided for an all-round student, whether your interest is in business, in sciences, in ICT, or in sports. The environment was perfect at East Mukarapo Secondary School. Many of my school colleagues have excelled in the national media. They've also excelled in sports, representing Trinidad and Tobago at the highest level in football. Many of my other colleagues have joined the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service and the National Military and are doing quite fine, representing Trinidad and Tobago with pride and with dignity. Many of my school friends have also migrated and are also doing fine and flying the flag of East Mokarapu proudly. And therefore, I want to thank some of my teachers who have contributed towards molding me and laying the foundation for where I am today. I can recall Ms. Lydia Pierre, my form teacher in 4B7 and 5B7. Ms. Lynch, my principal of business teacher. My Mr. Sebastian, my math teacher. And Ms. Worrell, my Caribbean history teacher, just to name a few. So as you celebrate your 45th anniversary, I want to congratulate you and I want to encourage you to continue to do well by your pledge, your national pledge, and to make the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago proud of you. The environment at East Mokarapo Secondary School can sometimes be challenging, I know, but those challenges can be channeled towards making you a well-rounded citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. So congratulations on your 45th anniversary and I look forward to meeting you sometime soon and I thank you. My name is Patrice Samuel Antoine. I am a proud parent of East Mokarapu Secondary School. Wasn't always proud, wasn't always happy. Um, in the beginning I was nervous because for one, my daughter being a student of Sacred Heart Girls, we never had East Mokarapu listed as our school. So imagine me feeling overwhelmed when the result came out and this was a school, me having absolutely no knowledge of the school besides it being called Comfrey. It was difficult at first to try to come to terms with it in the first four or five hours. However, I decided this is a new challenge. It's also a new journey and it's always something that Life is unexpected and everything in life is about change and how we deal with it. So I opted with the grand charge and the excitement and the joy of my daughter being one who is very enthusiastic about anything new. We ventured to the school carrying in our results and was given an opportunity with a warm welcome to peruse the school, see the grounds. And there was a whole paradigm shift in terms of the awakening of what was perceived, what was thought first, and what actually became what I now call home for both myself, my, my daughter's father, Kiara, and my whole home circle. The school of itself is one that has character. It has a story that takes well over 40 years. 
However, in getting to the school, you learn that it's not just about academics. It's a foundation in terms of the child being built with a skill and of course the inclination of after school activities, which warmed my heart as I didn't want my daughter to be bottled in in just books. I am finding it now that my daughter is in form five. I'm finding it now a little bit more saddening that she's leaving, primarily because I have grown to love East Mokorapo. East Mokorapo has given both myself as a parent and my daughter as a student and a stakeholder within the school the opportunity to develop skill sets that we never knew we had. As a parent, my first fear was always to be a part of PTA. Never enjoyed it, never wanted to be anything near it. However, East Mokorabo brought that out in me. And as a member of the PTA, working hand in hand with not only the principal, the vice principals and the teachers, but even down to the MTS guards, working along with everyone, you found a sense of belonging. You found an opportunity where the school presented in itself opportunities for us as parents, in addition to our children, to learn. Learn the diversity of our culture, our geographical location makes it even better that we have all walks of life coming through the door and each one was able to help one. Our community in East Mokorapo is one that is built on a sound foundation of family. 45 years is a year that speaks not only to the school, but also to myself. So I believe this transition that East Mokorapo is going through with 45 years being our milestone that takes us into a new dynamical equilibrium thanks to COVID, East Mokorapo has set itself far and apart and actually has been considered now more than ever the number one trade school in government schools offerings. And my daughter, who is now learning air conditioning and refrigeration, has really and truly embarked on a new shift because she first wanted to be a doctor. And to now see her enjoying her walk of life in East Mokorapo, I am a proud parent. I am a parent who will tell anyone, if you have never looked at East Mokorapo or considered East Mokorapo before as a school of choice for your daughter or your son, look now. You are having a gem of a school in your eyesight. And if you have never thought about the sky dynamics of offerings for any child, East Mokorapo has that. Because COVID taught us, was not doctors and lawyers or even politicians that were in demand or necessities within the hard times that came to us. It was those who have trade, those who have skills, those who are grounded and those who are holistically inclined to adapt. Thank you, East Mokorapo, for giving me such an opportunity and for giving my daughter the skills internally, externally, collectively to be an individual, I am proud to say, that will be a citizen of many proportions. You know, my time there was a, a pleasure being there every day, every minute. You know, it was an honor to be in Mokrapo. And my time there, it was um, a good experience. It was short, but so, so my um, message to everyone, you know, is, is a great school and, and in life, you know, Sometimes you meet obstacles and, and stuff like that. You know, I had little one or two obstacles in, in Mokrapo there with classes and um, football at the same time. But at the same time, it was good, you know. I'm proud to say that I, I went there and, you know, I will encourage anyone to, to, to go there and, and, and do their best, you know. And for me, you know, um, education is most important, you know. Um, don't matter where you go, what school it is, you know, you know, some people talk bad about the school, but I went there, I never, you know, see that bad, you know, it's all love there from the teachers and, and also the students, you know, so as I said before, it was a honor for me to go there and represent and, you know, put Mokrapo on, on the map, you know, in, in present um, interviews I, I have no doubt um, i would say that you know i'm a proud student to, to go there you know I, I think 
a lot come out from Mokorapo, a lot of positivity, you know, and yeah, it was it's an honor to go there. Hi, I'm Kalim Highland. Um, I'd just like to give a, 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 a little rundown on my time um, in Mokorapo Senior Conference, better known now as East Mokorapo Secondary School. My my time in, in Mokorapo was a was a was a great experience for me. You know, I came over from Mokorapo Junior Secondary School. And from the time I came to East Mokorapo, which in my time was Mokorapo Senior Comprehensive School, it was it was a pleasure being there because a lot of my friends and past pupils who I know and played football with or watch play football went on to Mokorapo. Um, and it's, it was always an option for me uh, at the end of the day, Mokorapo is a great school, you know, and you can have the option of also learning a trade. Well, some of my time in Mokorapo, you know, I met great, great people like, for instance, um, this is Ms. Jackson, you know, may I so rest in peace. Um, Derek Phillip, which is now the principal. And, you know, there's Miss Smart and then name it, all, all the teachers and, and, and um, even the securities were great people um, for the kids who always try to help the kids and uh, help us to, to be better person, um, persons in, in life. Um, you know, it was great for me to, to be there and, and, and be a part of, of of the school culture and the school history and into Mokorapo and playing intercal which was one of, of, of the successes I had in Mokorapo. Um, you know we won most of everything in the north. Um, sometimes we fall short at the national intercal you know so sometimes a lot of our players had to go with the national, um, the national team, and you know, most of our best players were selected for the national team, and that make our team a bit weak to the to the final stage in order to get the national intercal in my time. But everything in the north, we were successful, um, and I'm happy to be a part of that. That was one of my success in Mokrapo. Um, a little bit of challenges I had wasn't much. Um, was only that I had to try to balance my work with the football because I was overpowering the football with the schoolwork. Um, and you know, my form teacher, sorry, miss, but I have to say it, and you know, <laughs> this phrase will go with me throughout my life and it's not something bad it's something that good happened to me to make me even stronger um, this is my form teacher at the time Miss Bronka thank you I don't know if she's still in the school but last time I signed my professional contract my first professional contract away and I came back to the school I saw her so um yeah, so I was in, in school, in class, and, you know, I was more focusing on football and not paying so much attention in, in, in the schoolwork. Uh, and then Miss brought up a, a, a phrase saying that you need to, to do your work and stop studying football. You, know, you may not be lucky like, like Dwight York. And it was a little bit challenging to me because you know this was my dream and goal to be a professional footballer and by me watching Dwight York playing and representing Trinidad Tobago at the highest level this was always one of my goals and I took it I took it and I kept it and I used it to make me stronger and to prove that I can be 
who I want to be. Um, and this is just something I want to share also with anyone. Yes, you need to focus on your schoolwork and stuff, but don't let anyone discourage you from being who you want to be. You just need to work hard for it, be respectable, have discipline, and do your work and then put everything in God's hands. Hard work always pays off. Um, and again, thank you, Miss, for that little phrase and that, that word you, 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 you brought to, to, to my life that made me work even harder to be who I am today. Um, and the other little things is that, you know, a lot of people used to say that Mokorapo is a so-called school for ghetto people or so on. I will, I will say no, that is not true because we had a lot of people from all different areas who came to Mokorapo even after they went into schools before they came up to further their, their studies. It's a lot of talent and, and in running basketball, football, and in, in, in other, other um, in other activities and in, in other works like in woodwork and, and in, um, mechanic and welding and stuff, Mokrapu has produced a lot of talent um, and I will advise anyone to take the, the, the opportunity to go to the school and see what I'm talking about because the school is not only as good as I'm talking about it, it's the people that in the school, the people that in the school, they care about the, the children, they care about the school, they do their utmost best to make the school better, to make the kids better, to make the kids follow their dreams. And I'm one of them who proud to say, I came from Mukurapo, um, and also I just want to say also thanks to everyone who played a part with my future and being in Mukurapo from um, the coach at that time was Celeste Figaro, Ian Clausel, um, this is Chalador, this is Brinzi. Um, you know, we had the boss himself, uh, Mr. Philip, we had Miss Jackson, we had every, every, everyone, all the teachers and everyone. It was just uh, uh, a joy to see the Maroon and Cream um, on, on game days and, and how they come in and supporting us when we have game or even sometimes training, they stay back to watch and helping and supporting in any way. Um, so these are the, some of the, the good things. Um, I didn't have much bad times and, and, and struggles in Mokorapo. My name is Rigal Simon, a past student of East Mokorapo. Um, I am not like everyone else who would have had a negative uh, point of view or pre-assumption of the school. Because in my community, a lot of the persons already wore the uniform. So I actually wanted to come to the school just to wear the uniform. <laughs> right? So I was in love with the uniform. My expe expectations versus my reality. As I said, I didn't have any pre-assumptions. I went openly. And the reality of the school is that the teachers really care for the students. I knew that I was a part of the first set of four months I ever entered the school. And the love that we received from the teachers was phenomenal. They, they mothered and fathered us. <laughs> um, I know the principal, Miss Smart, she would defend us like if we were her very own children. So the reality is the teachers really love and care for the students and there's a, a kind of a camaraderie, camaraderie amongst the students as well. What I took away 
of course when you're in the school is when you really receive all the negative um, that comes with it you hear about bullying and stuff like that but what i took away from this institution is that you can't judge a book by its cover and what good can come out of nazareth is what the scriptures you care about jesus and oftentimes they hear what good could come out of peace Mokarapo. i can tell you that i am one of the students that came out there and i believe that i'm one of the best students <laughs> right i know that everybody probably have the same mindset as they are the best in whatever field that they're in today all right so yeah don't just assume anything about the school uh yeah and i think that's it thank you hi well uh, my daughter did not initially pass for east mokurapo secondary school um a choice was actually made for her to go to the school um, she was a transfer student. She came in in Form 2. Um, at first I was kind of nervous, not knowing exactly the environment that she was going to be placed in. Um, I did not have much knowledge of the school as a secondary school. My knowledge of the school was more based on when it was a senior comprehensive. Um, and the little bit of knowledge that I had um, about the school was really about football. It was a football in school and there were quite a few troublemakers in the school also. So I was kind of concerned about, about that. But um, given the time that had passed and the new environment, I was willing to give it a try with my daughter. Um, she was a bit sheltered, so I, that's, that is why I was kind of concerned. Um, but I also had some experience with some of my neighbors. They, they had, I think, two children going to school and they, they, they were um, good kids. Um, so I did not have any problem with my daughter going to school. Um, when she entered the school, I was pleasantly surprised to, to see the kind of, of interaction um, by the teachers in the school, and especially the principal. Um, it did not feel like a, 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 a secondary school or a comprehensive school. Um, there was some unity, plenty of unity amongst the staff and also the parents. Um, with the PTA and um, I was pleasantly surprised about how the school was, was conducting the affairs. Um, even through the pandemic, I was pleasantly surprised that the teaching staff uh, continued with their virtual teaching. Um, the teachers, they, they seem to be always on time and um, Every day they, they were in class, I did not see my daughter um, like unattended or wasting time. You always heard her conversing with the teachers and her other fellow um, um, students, colleagues. So I was pleasantly surprised by that. And um, we also had the experience whereby uh, a friend of the family, um, their child passed for East Mokarapo and they, they, they were kind of terrified about that and looking to transfer the child and I was able to, to, to tell them that um, the school is actually a very good school and they shouldn't have any fear and um, they in turn came back and, and, and spoke to us and said well yes the school is really a good school and it's a good thing that we didn't try to get a transfer away from the school. So I uh, you will just like to wish East Mok East Mokarapo happy 45 years. And um, I am pleased to be a parent of someone who is attending East Mokarapo. Thank you. Um, I entered Mokarapo from 1988 to 1991. Um, was a fantastic uh, experience for me because I think that propelled me to, the, to be the person I am today. Um, I played for the 1988 
um, in that one in North zone. There's a lot of players like Angus Steve and Dean Pacheco and Richard Tierra and so on. Um, my challenges were, one of the things were mixing, balancing the training, the football with the academics and so on, because you'll have a, the schedule used to be very, very tough. And um, we still have to focus on our schoolwork. I think that was one of the challenges. Um, my memories at Makarapu, um, I enjoyed um, doing uh, metal work and welding with Mr. Nash and so on, you know, um, fantastic experience and winning the, winning the title in 1988 as the only form for on the football team at the time because the team was a very tough team to make at the time. You know, um, leaving a legacy at East Makarapu, I skipped it. The ball team, three years straight, 1990, 1989 and 1990. And um, we did a fantastic job. One of my things is that um, remembering the, the past principle mixed with the present principle, I think Makarapu has come from far. I think these principles have done a fantastic job maintaining the school so that students could come to East Makarapu to achieve their goals. Um, I've seen a proper shock put in place and I think it augurs well for the future at East Mokorapo. Um, in a nutshell, I'm a proud past people of East Mokorapo and um, I give Mokorapo the thumbs up. As the school continues to foster community of learning and well-rounded citizens, we are mindful of the many stakeholders who bolster us and without whom there would be no success. On this, the 45th anniversary of this magnificent institution, we thank the dedicated teaching and civil staff who have proudly called Mukurapu family. We thank the parents who have entrusted us with their cherished offspring, some of whom have gone so far as selecting EMSS as a school of choice. The school is inundated daily with calls requesting students being transferred in. We thank the community for giving us a chance to find ourselves and removing the walls of prejudice and stigma that were once built up in fear of even hearing the name Mokorapu. We thank our students without whom we would cease to exist. We thank you boys and girls, young men and young ladies for finding ways to make Mokorapu first. We are proud of who we are becoming. Thank you to our well-wishers and naysayers. Your commentary keeps us in check and we are eternally grateful.